Hello everyone and welcome to the second half of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Uh, it's a very interesting game between Vladimir Kramnik and Peter Svidler. Now, uh, before we start the game or, or start with anything, uh, let's just uh, check out the standings before we start the game. So, uh, after seven rounds, uh, we finished the first half of the tournament and it's Carlsen and Arunyan in the lead. Uh, then Svidler and Kramnik with three and a half points, so two of them are playing this game. If either of them wins, uh, then he is going to get very close to Magnus Carlsen and Levon Aronian. Then Rajabo and Grishuk with three, and Gelfand and Ivanchuk with two and a half. Uh, it's a very interesting game that uh, uh, you know brought up a lot of questions after after it was played, but uh, we will address that matter after we see the game, as this is very important. And the photos uh, we have from this uh, round are also very important uh, to decide uh, on this matter. But also we will uh, discuss this after the game. So here we have uh, a nice photo of Peter Swidler here. You can see him preparing uh, his black pieces. He's, uh, you know, he's preparing that knight, uh, <laughs> knight on g8. He knows that his first move will be knight to f6. And, uh, you know, he, he's making sure that everything is ready. And uh, then we have a very nice close-up of Vladimir Kramnik here. And also here we have... Uh, a, a nice photo from the middle game. It's very hard to really figure out what's going on here. Uh, it seems like someone in the audience is being very loud and uh, Kramnik is like, guys, not cool, you know, Peter's trying to concentrate. But, you know, it's always uh, very hard to actually figure out what's going on in the photos. Uh, but that being said, let's see this game. So uh, it's very interesting after we see the, uh, the opening moves, d4, knight to f6. Uh, c4, g6, uh, knight to c3, and d5, it's the Groomfield defense. And Peter Swidler was known uh, to be a Groomfield specialist, and he really enjoyed playing the Groomfield, but uh, Vladimir Kramnik was known to be uh, a Groomfield killer, so definitely an interesting matchup. And uh, you'll see that uh, after a couple more moves, he captures on d5, knight captures e4, this is the main line, uh, knight captures, pawn captures, and bishop to g7. Uh, we have knight to f3, c5, uh, bishop to e3 and queen to a5, uh, queen to d2, and this is the exact same position uh, Vladimir Kramnik had with the white pieces when he played his World Chess Championship match against Garry Kasparov. It's, uh, this is a position from uh, game two of their match, and uh, Vladimir Kramnik won that game very nicely with the white pieces. It's one of the two games Kramnik won in that match. Uh, so Kramnik is very familiar how to play against the Grunfeld and especially with this position. Uh, here Swidler chooses knight to c6. In in their World Chess Championship match, uh, Kasparov continued with bishop to g4. Then the game continued rook to b1 and so on and so on. So here uh, the game takes uh, a new approach. Uh, knight to c6. Uh, we have rook to c1. Uh, pawn captures, pawn captures and immediately a trade of queens. Queen captures, king captures now. Uh, we have castles and d5, attacking the knight on c6. And rook to d8, pinning the pawn. So black doesn't immediately have to react to this. And here we have a move king to c2. And this king to c2 move is a move Kramnik says that uh, he already uh, had in his home uh, preparation uh, while he was preparing for his game against Garry Kasparov 13 years ago. Uh, so definitely, definitely uh, Swidler is out prepared in this matchup. Uh, knight to e5, knight captures, bishop captures, and bishop to c4. Uh, bishop to d7, f4 now, kicking the bishop back, bishop to d6, and king to b3. So, as you can see, uh, the material is completely equal on the board. Both players have the bishop pair, uh, but uh, there is uh, a, a thing you can realize is that uh, white's king is, uh, is a much more active, and uh, black does have 2 to 1 advantage uh, uh, considering pawns on the queen side. So this is something uh, black will often try to use as a, as a winning method. You know, just exchange one of the pawns and then push the remaining pass pawn. Uh, but now that white already has a king here, very active, it's going to be very hard to utilize this advantage on the queen side. And on the other hand, uh, white has a very strong center here. So we have f6, not allowing e5 in the future, uh, a4. Uh, rook d to c8 and h4 now. Uh, Kramnik will definitely uh, want to play h5 to break open on the king side. Uh, rook a to b8 and now bishop to b5. Bishop captures, pawn captures and a6. And here we have b6 and uh, Kramnik now successfully uh, locks down the, the queen side and will transfer the game over to the king side. Uh, king to f7, uh, we have h5 now. 
uh, rook captures on c1, h captures on g6, first uh, and in between move, uh, king captures on g6, and bishop captures on c1. Uh, we have rook to g8, and uh, now g4. And uh, definitely, uh, Swidler would uh, enjoy moving this king, so there would be an, an attack from the rook uh, towards the g4 pawn. Uh, so first he pushes h6, uh, making room for the king on h7, and uh, you know, waiting to see what Vlad will do. And uh, this is a very interesting position for you to analyze. It's uh, White is uh, somewhat better here. He's more active, uh, but still, uh, making any progress in this position requires like surgical precision. So it's a very nice position for you to to pause the video and try to find uh, try to find the move. How do you push for push uh, for advantage here? Uh, so uh, I will give it a couple of seconds uh, for you to decide where you want to check it out. I mean, it's. Uh, if you enjoy end games, you, you, you're going to enjoy uh, how, how to make progress here. So for those of you who were able to do this, congratulations, you are an excellent end game player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, here Kramnik uh, continued with rook to h5. And rook to h5 is indeed, is indeed the strongest move recommended by the engine. Uh, if you found something like f5, this does check the king and open up the attack towards the h6 pawn. Uh, but it doesn't really do anything. After king to f7... Uh, if you capture, then black captures on g4, nothing really going on there. Uh, and, and if you try to protect it to capture next, then h5, and you're really not not getting anything here. After after a couple of exchanges, bishop to g3, and now as the bishop is governing both h4 and h2, uh, white is actually losing because this pawn is now free to march forward all, all the way to h1. So you know, it seems like uh, seems like a, th a trivial idea, but uh, definitely worth mentioning. So after this h6 move, rook to h5, rook to h5, preparing e5, a very important central break. Uh, king to f7, uh, sorry, king to f7, and now e5. Uh, you don't really gain anything by captures. Captures, you'd still have to pretty much decide the same thing. So after e5, bishop to c5. Uh, now. Uh, Swiddler is attacking the g4 pawn and also the b6 pawn. Uh, here we have e6 first. This comes with check, uh, king to f8. Uh, and now again, what do you do here as white? Uh, if, you, if you decide, for example, to capture and allow rook captures, capture here, capture here, and let's say uh, checks, checks, uh, you, you don't really uh, have a way of winning this position. Bishop to a3, bishop to d6. You, don't, you, you can't allow uh, white to grab the e7 pawn. After captures, captures, the position gets pretty much blocked. Uh, after the king uh, comes to e7, there's no way for white to break through. White always have to, has to keep an eye on this past a pawn, and there's really no way uh, for white to win this. So after this king to f8 move, rook to h4. Uh, it's much more important uh, to keep an eye on this g4 pawn, and now Swedler has to decide what to do here. Does he want to grab the b6 pawn immediately? Uh, the engine does enjoy this move, but uh, Swidler probably didn't want to allow bishop to a3, and then Kramnik would be able to start pushing his pawns. Uh, so first, uh, king to g7, uh, preparing rook to d8. Uh, there's also the matter of the d5 pawn, so Swidler will, will grab his pawn. Uh, we have f5 now, uh, rook to d8, and bishop captures on h6 with check. King to g8, now comes king to c4, and uh, now the king is guarding the d5 pawn, so now bishop captures on b6. And uh, Swidler does have two pass pawns on the queen side, and it seems like, uh, you know, there is there is compensation for uh, for the cramped in position, uh, but uh, there's actually a forced win here for Vladimir Kramnik, and also a very nice position for you to, to pause the video and figure out uh, how to proceed in this position, as you will most likely... Uh, find yourself in in similar uh, situations like these like this so uh for those of you who were able to find it uh congratulations once again you're an excellent end game player and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show uh the move you have to find is g5 it seems pretty natural but you know still if, if you found uh, the continuation then then it's uh uh pretty much pretty much that's it you, you are an excellent player uh, the idea is after f captures, simply bishop captures, and now simply f6 is coming, and there's really nothing black can do here. Uh, whatever you play, of course, bishop captures on e7 is a threat after you defend it, f6 is coming nevertheless. Uh, f7 is a threat after you capture, there's really no defense against rook to h8 checkmate. Uh, that's, that's game over. So after g5, uh, bishop to f2 uh, was played by Siddler attacking the rook, uh, but now comes rook to g4. Uh, we have king to h7, and now g captures on f6, giving up the bishop. 
Uh, it doesn't matter what black does here, even if you capture the bishop, yes, you are up a piece, but simply d6, and there are simply too many pawns uh, for black to stop all of them. Uh, e captures, now you simply push a pawn, after rook moves, you, you push another pawn, and you get a queen, and you don't even have to grab the rook, you're, you're simply checkmating black. So after g captures on f6, uh, we have e captures on f6, and now uh, e7. Uh, rook to c8, this comes with check, king b3, and after bishop to c5, uh, simply rook to c4 was played, and uh, it was in this position that uh, that uh, Peter Swidler resigned the game, uh, because whatever he does, uh, the, the game is simply lost. Uh, the, the simple rook captures on c5 wins, uh, then the pawns are marching forward, There's uh, there, there is no move black can even make here, that, that would make sense. So yeah. Uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's only one game uh, from round 8, but we will show all four games from round 8, as all four of them are, are very interesting and have some very interesting stories behind them. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of people, after this game was played, uh, they, they started talking like, oh, it's the Bobby Fischer scenario all over again. Uh, the Russians are starting to play as one, you know, Swidler through this game, so, uh, so his fellow Russian can... Uh, can catch up to Carlsen and uh, and Levon Aronian, and uh, as uh, as Kramnik still has to face Grishchuk in the second part of the tournament, that that will surely be another point for Vladimir Kramnik. And you know, uh, people you know people like uh, like uh, to talk about things like this. But I definitely don't think this is the case uh, because you had a couple of uh, couple of moments where you had to find, for example, that rook to h5 move. That's simply that's simply brilliant play by Vladimir Kramnik, and there is no move that uh, that uh, Swidler actually blundered. Uh, he was just in in a difficult position with uh, with little time on the clock, and he had to make some extremely precise moves. And uh, his moves were not bad or mistakes or blunders or anything. They just uh, weren't the top, you know, like top top moves. So uh, Kramnik always played the top move, and uh, you know, after after uh, some ten moves, that really does does uh, uh, does matter. And another thing, uh, I mean, look at this, look at this photo. It's a photo from Swidler before the game. This does not look like someone uh, who was ordered to throw a game uh, against Vladimir Kramnik. He, he's very happy, he's very happy to play this game, you know, making <laughs> making ready uh, to play that in the first night move. So that definitely doesn't seem like it. And look at this, uh, we have a photo of, th this is Kramnik and Swidler uh, after the game in the press conference. Now, they definitely don't look like uh, some people who, who agreed uh, <laughs> to make this game look this way, uh, Kramnik. I mean, Kramnik is happy he won the game, but he's also sad for his for for his fellow Russian. And uh, Swidler definitely, you know, re really looks sad for losing this game. So yeah, I don't think there's anything to those stories, but you know, that's. I mean, the internet is a wonderful place where everyone can share their opinions. So you know, do share your opinions in the comments as well. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mario Antinosa, uh, Yusef Alkabani, and uh, Gevor Ktonian for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon with uh, another game from round 8 uh, of the 2018 Candidates Tournament. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.